What's on, where, and when? It's the Talk of Nelson. NBS Talk Nelson. At NBS, we believe in banking for life. For over 160 years, we've been a trusted banking provider for generations of locals like you. We know our clients personally and build long-term relationships with them, offering flexibility by giving our staff freedom to make quick decisions to put them first. Experience banking for life with NBS. The Marco Rugby Roundup. Welcome to the Marco Rugby Roundup. I'm Chris Butler and it's welcome back to my co-host, Liz Edwards. Looking forward to the show. Got two good uh, gentlemen from the Stoke Club with us. Uh, we do, and uh, we're shifting ourselves around the venue just to make sure the public get a good view of the two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's great to bring you another episode with the latest rugby news on the top of the South Broadcasting from, as we pointed out, our venue sponsor, the Turf Hotel, Main Road Stoke. And uh, thanks to Stan and the team for their support on this weekend. Live music, Friday night, they've got Pick and also EZs, I think it is, or XZs on, on Saturday night. Uh, it's great for live music here. On Sunday, it's UFC 300, all the action. So make sure you come and check it out. And also you can grab a buffet at the batch, 11 till 2 and 5 till 8 on Sunday. So thanks to Stan and the team. Uh, this week, we're covering senior rugby, super rugby men's and women's, and also our special guests, it's Matt Leary and Tavita Kolomatangi from the Stoke Rugby Club. Great to have you here, guys. Yeah, it's good to, yeah good to be here. Got the colours on, good to see. Um, we'll talk more in depth about your background in uh, rugby, but can you tell us a little, little bit about your roles at the club? So, Matt, what do you do there? Um, so, currently at the moment, I'm just the uh, club captain. So, just pretty much looking after the boys and making sure they've got everything they need to have a successful year and, yeah, just look after the boys. Good fun. Tavita? Uh, I'm currently helping out with the forwards. Um, so I guess one of the assistant coaches uh, and I'm still playing too. So that was a bit of a spanner in the works. I wasn't expecting to play, be playing um, early on in the season, but, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Don't laughs> the reflection of that. You, you gotta be care- you, you gotta be careful when you bring if you bring your uh, boots along. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just a reflection of the, the numbers you've got for forwards? Um oh we've got we've got quite a few numbers, but um just I guess the last two weeks uh they haven't been available. Um so I think we're looking for a bit of experience too. So um that's where I yeah, and you'd bring that in spades, Tavita. Uh, we'll talk more in depth about your backgrounds a bit later on the show, but uh, let's get into senior club rugby, and it's the Tasman Trophy. Round two, Les, and uh, how did that all pan out? Well, the, the big game, because it was a John Goodman Challenge Trophy fixture, was over at uh, Rewalker. Uh, Kaharangi holding the shield uh, were visited by Central. Central ended up prevailing 23-20, scored a try in the, about the 80-minute mark to actually reclaim the John Goodman trophy to put in their cabinet for one more week. So uh, just a shout-out to Kaharangi, though. They held that uh, that shield for a period over three years. So, yeah, right. you know, they picked it up in uh, 2020. Uh, two held it through 2023 and 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 put it up for a challenge this year. So very very good effort by Kaharangi. Uh, in the the game at Trafalgar Park, uh, Mo- uh, Marist were visited by Mootry and uh, prevailed 45 points to 10. Uh, really good performance by uh, the Marist team. They put on seven tries against two, scored against them. So uh, the coaches. Uh, said us our era and Kane Hams would be very pleased with the performance of of uh, the Marist Club. Uh, that was followed by a game, and these boys were involved, Nelson versus Stoke. How did that go? Uh, no, it was a, definitely a good game. Like We're still um, early days, and we're still building a little bit of rust there, because um, obviously we didn't really 
Oh, we didn't actually at all have a pre-season game, so we're still sort of finding our feet. Um, the boys started off really well, which is awesome, which you need to do against that strong uh, Nelson team. You know, like you want to try and shut them down early because if you let them get going, it's... Yeah, but we couldn't keep it, obviously, going the whole game, and um, we let them in a bit there in the middle of the game, and they scored a few tries. But the boys managed to come back together and close it out, so... Yeah, they're done well. Yeah, it was a good win, 45-19. Kavita, you got the last 30 minutes or so of that game. How was it? Yeah, it came on uh, the last 30. Um, managed to get a meet pie, mate. So oh, yeah. that's always a good good game when that happens. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was awesome to see uh, a lot of our um, a lot of uh, debutants um, have their first game on, on Saturday. Um, obviously, positive um I guess something to, to to look forward to in the future. So um, hopefully we can um, build on that, and I'm sure we will. And, um, and and fingers crossed that everyone's healthy and and injury free. Um, well, you do see. you do have a buy this week, don't you guys? So yeah, chance yep. to, for you rest up the body, yeah, uh, and the boys to the three group and and uh, get ready for round four. So. Um, so that segues nicely into round three, doesn't well, it? Well, well, it does. And you just gave big raps to Central for hanging on to the God, uh, the John Goodman Challenge Trophy. Yeah. And yet you're going to take it off them on Saturday, are you? Yeah, well, yeah I, I've got to be careful. Couldn't have McDonald be listening to this? So no, you know, we're, we're nervous as all get out. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, they, they got it off Kaharangi and they immediately have to defend it. Uh, it's yeah. like a Ramfurly Shield challenge, the John Goodman challenge, So Oops. you yeah. uh you, you if you're playing at home, you defend it during the regular season. So Marist are on their way over to Lansdowne Park and, and so uh that will be a tough game. Mm -hmm. It's a replay of the final from last year, uh at the same venue, central prevailing then. So, you know, Marist will have to be really on top of their game to to uh, get that trophy back. The next one is Kaurangi versus Waimaro uh, boys. So who have you guys played so far? Uh, we've played Maris and Nelson. Yeah. And Nelson. So Kari, Kaurangi and Waimaro boys. So maybe, Les, I'll throw that one at you. You're a bit more familiar with... Yeah, so so Kaurangi and Waimaro boys, what a great game, actually. It yeah, will be, two, yeah. two very, very, very good teams. Um, I'll uh, Look, I'll stick my neck out and I'll say Kaurangi at home. Uh, just because they are at home, I think that this this game is even Stevens. It's it, but it's at Sports Park Montuweka, so um, I'll tip Kaharangi to win that. Well, I mean, have had a bit of a rest, so uh, they'll be certainly up for it. Uh, Mutri versus Nelson at at Spring Creek. So you have taken on Nelson before uh, Tavita. So what are your thoughts on that one? I reckon it'll be pretty even, um, mind you. The those those Mutri boys are big boys too. <laughs> they they are some big. awesome uh, ball carriers. Um, so I don't know. Um, it'll be quite a tight game, but I'd say Mutri will be up. Um, no disrespect to Nelson, yeah. but um, they've got a young squad and they're still finding their their feet. But yeah, maybe by one or two points. Yeah, I, 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 look, this competition is so close, isn't it? This mm. year we've got seven teams. And they're all within a struck match of each other, I think, yep. uh, in terms of ability. And that, as you say, you know, two big sides in Nelson and in, in Mootery. Matt, how would you uh, how would you see this game? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same as Tavila and you, I suppose. It's a massive, uh, massive two big big sides. And um, I'm glad I'm not playing in those games. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not quite that desperate yet. Um, yeah, I reckon Nelson would get it. I reckon they'll scare. I reckon they'll be up after their hard couple of weeks ahead. There you go. Yeah, split the suit a, a, a bit each way. So points table, Mara sitting at the top at the moment, Les, uh, closely followed by Central, Waimara Old Boys and Stoke, even Stevens, Karangi have had that first week on, as a buy anyway. Uh, then Nelson and Mutri at the tail. So, yeah, so the early days. Yeah, it is early days, and teams are having buys in the first round. So until we get to the start of the second round, that points table will change and fluctuate quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, happy to happy to have two wins out of two games. Any news on the women's competition at the moment? Do we uh, know where they sit at the moment? Yeah, or? so the, the draw has been confirmed. 
28th of April is the start date. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think they're going to have – there's four teams. Four. There'll be one game on the Saturday, one game on the Sunday of that weekend. So, yeah, we'll start talking about uh, the Women's Tasman Trophy very shortly. Super Rugby round seven and, uh, geez, big win by the Blues, wasn't it? Pretty comprehensive. Uh, you guys uh, see the game on the weekend? No. No? <laughs> Not on Saturday night, eh? No. Who, who do you follow in the Super Rugby? <laughs> you're allowed to say. You're allowed to say. To be honest, I don't follow any of them anymore. It's like. I'm more the eighteen cup now. I think I've sort of stepped away from the super rugby. Do you think it's okay. too much? It, 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 there's a lot of talk about the game at the moment, isn't it? And yeah. my my thoughts were, as I do think that it's a little bit more exciting. But we there's a lot of rugby, and last year there was a lot of talk about, you know, um, the game as an attraction to watch. And is that part of the reason why you don't get so much engaged these days? I just. I suppose, like when I was younger, you know, I went for the Blues, like that was my team. And then, like as you get older, you start to know players in the team, so you start following them. Like yes. when Tabita was at the Chiefs, would follow him. While Khan Fortuli was at the Crusaders, would follow them. But now I'd I'd feel like we don't really have that connection to Super Rugby teams anymore. Like they're not really you, local. You never players. see them, mate. Yeah, you don't see them. Like yeah, so it's, you sort of lost that connection. Yes. Yeah. Resides in cups a bit different. You know, you know everyone out there and it's good to watch. Importance of keeping our provincial game alive, Les. Yes. So, um, (coughs) but the Blues did have a big win against the Force. Uh, You being a Force man, uh, pretty hapless performance, wasn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I only really saw the highlights, but uh, they definitely performed better at home. But yeah, uh, obviously struggling a bit this year again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tavita, the Chiefs, big win. Over Moana Pacifica. So, what were your thoughts over? I've seen that game. Um, yeah. I don't really watch a lot of Super Rugby, but if it's the Chiefs or any any um, Kiwi team with a lot of the boys that we know that are in there, I'll probably watch that. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a hiding, to be honest. I, I'm a bit of a supporter of the Moana Pacifica, yeah. being Pacifica myself, and obviously being a Chiefs man. Um, it was hard to watch. Um, yeah. Especially uh, as a as a Moana Pacifica uh, supporter, um, they just got dicked. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. honestly, yeah. yeah. Put to the sword. It was hard to watch, man. <laughs> there was there was some thoughts. Uh, obviously, there was a controversy with the letting go of the coach. Um, Liam Sopwanga came out and was quite critical. Don't know if he played in that game on the weekend. Um, but also um, there was some talk about the fact that perhaps they need to, because Moana Pacifica is a combination of, it is Samoa, but are there any other nations involved? Samoa, Tonga. And Tonga. The, yeah, the, Tonga. The, the New Wayans yeah. and the Cook Islands. So it is a, a combined. Yeah, there was, I, I think it's actually someone calling for a Tongan team <laughs> because the amount of supporters in Auckland yeah. uh, and perhaps that would bring some vitality to it. But Really, I mean, the idea is to try and get Pacifica Rugby on the map and get them that regular week in, week out. But um, we can see some advancements with the Drua, but why do you think that Moana are struggling? Is it is it other sports that are interfering, or what do you think it is? I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess Fiji... I don't know much about the money situation there or the funding and stuff, so it could be something to do with the money. No. I think I think it's venue. Um, I, the Moana don't have a venue. Because their home game's in Auckland, isn't it? It can be anywhere. It seriously can be anywhere. Albany, uh, Auckland, Hamilton, they need a home game, uh, home ground advantage. Because like look at Drew. They do. Look they, at Drew. Yeah, yeah, they take games to Latoka, Suva, Um if they were played in Apia, yeah, it would be a different ball game, I would think, I'd in think terms that. of support. Yep. Yeah. It is the money, isn't it? And I think um, Sir Brian, uh, help me, Will, uh, Williams, Sir Brian yes. Williams called that. He said we need to have Apia as our, our home turf, yeah. and that's a money thing. Yep. Yeah. It would truly be a Moana Pacifica team then. 
if yeah. it, and, and the crowds would be awesome that's for yeah. sure so anyway we move on because currently yeah. they're not there no. but they are homeless and I, yeah. I just think that that makes it really really difficult for them yeah okay let's look at round eight moana pacifica versus the red so um i'll go with you first tavita what do you think on that one i think moana pacifica will be wanting to to get get up on this game um rewrite their wrongs from last week and I think it'll be a close game, but Reds have, yeah, obviously Reds have been awesome too. So been pretty good, haven't they? Um, I want to say a close game. But Reds will be up. Yeah. Waratahs versus Crusaders. Good start by the Waratahs, but they've sort of fell off oh. the wagon a bit. And of course, the train is coming, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, no, no. The Waratahs have had a, a poor run. They're one and six. It's not a good. It's not a good win loss record, is it? Whereas the and the Crusaders are one and five, but. They're starting to get some really good players back, um, mm. and they've found their mojo again. They've got back to the way they play the game. They seem to have really gelled, and I, I would think that the Crusaders will get up there. Some would call thirteen plus. I reckon thirteen plus. Yeah, mate. Uh, some would say that this potentially could be the final Hurricanes versus the Chiefs. Matt, I'm going to give that to you, even though Tavita will have some <laughs> firm opinions hey, on that. Definitely got to go with the Chiefs on that one. Home match. Yeah. What do you think that is? Because Hurricanes haven't they haven't lost yet, have they? No. Uh, no. Nah. Nah, um, and and Chiefs are away. Ah, uh, Chiefs look uh they look good in the weekend. They 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 got a good, I suppose, young team as well. These young fellas are starting to, to fire and, and they look good. Yeah, and they've got Damian yeah. McKenzie, who's the best first five in the country. No Roy Guard yeah. for At the Hurricanes. Hurricanes no. Yeah. Mm. So TJ might come back. You'd support the Chiefs on this one, wouldn't you, Tabita? <laughs> blind yeah, blind <laughs> Um They're a different team without uh, Big Jim or Damian McKenzie, but yeah. um, I would back the Chiefs for this one. Cam was a big, he, he was a big uh, a loss last, was it last week? Two yes, weeks yeah, ago. Yes, yeah, yes, so, um, still yeah. an awesome team. Yeah, they do. TJ Perinara and Rudd, uh, Judd, is it Richard Judd? No, still good halfbacks, but yeah, I'm with you. Chiefs to win that one. Uh, Rebels versus the Highlanders. Um, Highlanders seriously need a win here, but the Rebels actually have been putting up a little bit of a fight, uh, haven't they, uh, under the circumstances? Yeah, they they started to kick into some good form. Uh, the Highlanders just, there's something missing there, and I'm not sure I could put my finger on it, but they do have... Uh, Jimmy Tavatavanawai on their wing, and mm. he's one of those boys that we follow, isn't he? And uh, so let's let's put our uh, support behind the Highlanders on this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, started off with great promise, but yeah, something going amiss there. Uh, Another player to watch, Max Hicks from the Maris yes. Club. He, he's in the second row there. Yeah. Um, and you know he he's performing well. I think out of position, but he he's got to play that role for mm. them. So. Yeah, I just want the Highlanders to get their mojo back and and uh, get a win. Point stable, Blues uh, and the Hurricanes, first equal at the moment, and the Brumbies. So, geez, how close is that? They're not far behind the Chiefs, and then, uh, yeah, the Rebels, Reds, Drua, Highlanders, Pacifica, Waratahs, Crusaders, all, uh, you know, quite a way behind, but... We're still waiting for that charge, aren't we, from the Crusaders? Oh, we'll, we'll see it coming. Yeah, I, I can see it coming. Uh, Super Rugby, I'll picky. Uh, round six results. Uh, the Hurricanes do go down to the Blues and uh, Matatu just get over the Chiefs. Yeah, so so it was very interesting, you know, that Matatu upset win over the Chiefs cost uh, Chiefs a home final. So... Uh, whereas with the Blues getting up over the Hurricanes' power, uh, they're going to host the final, Blues Woman versus Chiefs Manu at Eden Park, Saturday, 4 o'clock. So should be a good game. So what do we think on that, lads? I mean, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch any of the games, but um, who are we picking? Oh, I'll, I'll pick the Blues at home. They've got a bit of momentum, I think. So yeah. I haven't been watching anything, but... Um... You know what my <laughs> Chiefs Manawa all the way. There's certainly a lot of bias for you. I've got on you to be that right. You played for them, so you should. <laughs> I actually, um, I actually do. Uh, I've come across the the coach for the um for the Chiefs Manawa team, so um, I've had a little bit to do with her. She used to be hard out in the club scene uh, up there in Waikato, so um, 
not sure, mate. Awesome. Um, don't, don't, don't quiz me on that one, Les. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you're better. Yeah. Good coach. Good coach. Okay, look forward to that, Les. Um, you're with the Marco Rugby Roundup. It's early days in the Tasman Trophy. Played 2-1-1. Are you happy with your senior playing numbers and how the Premier team is travelling at the moment, Tevita? Yeah, I guess personally from start, uh, I think we're in a good position. Um, a lot of new players coming through. Um, new coaches, I guess. Uh, new club captains and, you know, even Renee coming in. It's It's been a big, big shift. Um, but um, in terms of the rugby, um, we're in a good space. Uh, a, a lot of old heads, a, a few old heads and a few, you know, new to uh, first year of senior rugby coming from college. So it's um, it's a it's a good culture that we're building. Hey, yeah, um, I mean, and we are obviously trying to instill what was in the past now. So just trying to get the these these new guys to remember, um, or well, get to know like our culture and our you know the way we do things as as Stoke rugby men. Yeah, well, and women and the, kids. the club itself is is very buoyant. You know, you get that, you sense that energy from your supporters. You go to an away game and your supporters follow you, and that's not to be said for a lot of clubs. You know, you, you, you've got a good culture in not only the playing setup but in the in the support setup as well. Yeah. And I guess that comes down to the committee and just uh, the community really getting behind you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We've got an awesome community. Uh, the Stoke community and um, it's been like that forever, you know, like it would yeah, been huge support. Um, I suppose it's got a lot to do with it as well, like even with, um, you know, our, our players been going into the schools, been doing some work in the schools and then in the weekend, our senior teams took a um, a club uh, skills, skills day. day, skills day for the juniors. So, so we had all our junior players come together at Stoke and all the senior boys took some trainings for them and had some fun. And um, yeah, just just gotta get out there in the community eh, and keep that connection going. And a good feel just mm. right over the road yeah, from well, here. It's a great um, and yeah. a new a new club rooms. You go to an, a home game and and it's packed. Yeah. Back. Yeah, it is, and it's it's awesome to see. Um, it's just quite a good setup too. Eh? Yes. Um, but yeah, like like I said, when you said that you know we, whenever we play away that our you know our supporters come with us. It's, I think we put a lot of time and effort into our JAB and 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 being having that community connection um, is the big thing. And kids, you know, we're not like superstars up here that they can't come and talk to. It's we're on the same level, and I think that's the difference. Mm. Nice. And senior B always travels pretty well, so looking strong again this year. Yeah, yeah, hope so. They're training well. The boys have been training well for the last last month and there's been a big clean out there as well, I suppose. Um a few of the boys have sort of retired and and moved on and now there's a good group of uh other men coming through. Um so we'll find out the first week if we can do the damage. But please don't tell me groom is retired. Uh, <laughs> he's, sure he's, still he's, running he's he's got a couple more years till his boy gets there. Okay. He he uh he, he needs to have a game with his boy before he's allowed to retire. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I don't know who that is, but I was gonna ask about Chris Little because oh, Lex Little, yeah. He, Lex Little. He'll, he'll so he's definitely data. is he coming back? But it's as I heard the rumor that Ed Retired. He was moving on. Did you see him playing against Maris? No. He should have retired. He should have retired. Sorry, brother. Is that right? Uh, no, he'll be there. If he's not he's playing still got the off, off, if he's not playing off the bench for A's, he'll be uh, playing for the B's for sure. He's always he's always around. He's yeah. always around. He's younger than me. He should still be playing. No, nah, yeah. correct. Correct. He's always there. He's a good man. All right. So Matt, your family has really strong ties and and to the club and plays it. Many of your members play and family members play an active role. Um, so tell us about the family connections to the state club. Oh shucks. Um, I suppose it starts way back. We moved here from uh, Wanganui when I was a kid and straight into Stoke Rugby. We went to Nayland College and obviously that Nayland Stoke Rugby connection's strong. So well, we were straight into Stoke and me and my three or oh, Two of, me and two of my brothers, we both sort of went through and the three of us played 
right up to me. We've had senior rugby together there. Um, and my sister is now the what club capability there. Um, my what else is he? I uh, lost the plot. Um, <laughs> your dad. <laughs> oh, my dad. Yeah, my dad. Yeah, he um he he coached all throughout the years. He even coached the seniors for a few years. He was even coaching teams. Me and my brothers weren't playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just loves it. So yeah, yeah, that's a we've been around there for a while, and now all the nieces and nephews are getting involved and it's awesome. Yeah, the Larry family name is yeah. synonymous with Stoke, but hey, you did have a stint with the Maris Club. So what went on there? Oh, you got me there. <laughs> you got me there. Um, I should have brought him a green oh, scarf. Yes. Oh, mate, it's funny because we grew up hating Marist. <laughs> we hated Marist. But there's all, because in Monganoi, Stoke and, um, I mean, Monganoi, we played for Monganoi Pirates as juniors and, um, Marist is on the other end of the field, but they're on the same ground. And um used to be like, you know, the old potato rocket launchers like flying, flying across the field, all the wars. And then that sort of just carried on to here. And Stoke Marist have got that same love-hate relationship. And when you play each other, it's always a massive game. Um and then I suppose um what led me to go into Marist was um I sp I suppose uh Stoke. We we're, were we're doing we we're doing well. We we're, we're sort of winning every game, and and we just couldn't quite get there in the, in the finals. So we um so the club wanted to make a change. They thought we had a bit of a um a bit of a a drinking problem in the club at that stage, and so they um they're trying to change that. And they brought in a new coach, and he brought in a few a few uh imports. And that was like um that was new to this region. Oh, you know, there were a few teams that had imports, um, but that was never happened at Stoke. Like so when I come to Stoke, it was all all my mates, you know, we grew up, come through Nail and come through the ranks, and it was all about the boys, you know, that's what Stoke was, always the brotherhood. And then the 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 few imports come, they weren't good players, they were just from yeah, from Wales or overseas or yeah. something. But yeah, so that sort of got me off, and then Maris was struggling at that stage for numbers, and one of the cousins of Pa Thompson took me into going over, and he can talk a few people into anything. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the case there. I went over there, and then had a couple of seasons there before I moved to Australia. So, did you win any silverware at Maris? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the the following year. Um, Mike Fraser come in and and a few extra players as as you do and um we ended up getting the title there at Marist and that's my only title and and Nelson so kind of have to get but interestingly the... Mike Fraser did for the Marist club bringing in import players yeah, if you like yeah, which, a lot, which a drove lot. him away so no wonder you went oh, back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just yeah. quickly your your brother Carl uh, he yep. he was a Stoke man and yep. and played about four games for the Tasman Marco um, yep. what's he up to these days so he's over in Perth raising a young a young family over there um, working in the in the construction industry in the high rises just running some sites but yeah he's always. He's always happy that fella. He's always good for yeah. us. Yeah. So, uh, and is he still involved in rugby at all? Or? Um, so he, he did come back. He's he's getting up there now. He's getting up there. There's a few mm. grey hairs on his head, but um, yeah, he, he had a few games last year for uh, Cottesloe over in Perth. Cottesloe, oh, okay. yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he's enjoying it now. He's probably just watching his young boy play rugby and getting into it. They used to have the uh, tens at uh, Double View in Cottesloe. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that was a great day out. Yeah, big, yeah. big crowds. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll have to catch up with Chris Goodman and see if he can't reach out to Carl and get him along to a force game. So, um, and the kids. So we'll do that. Um, last but not least, you must be awfully proud, given your connections to the two clubs, that the the Division One trophy played between Marist and Stoke is in fact named after your dad, the Basileri Trophy. Proud about that? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, it's definitely it's a hard hard trophy to get too. We 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 are been trying to get it for what ten years this year, and mm. unfortunately we haven't managed to get it. So I think when we win it, 
I'm going to bury it. So it'll be over. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm asking Chris Little about what happens because, you know, you will one day. <laughs> he said, I'm going to sleep with him and drink out of him. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, I, I'm sure I'm sure you want it. But I, I'll tell you now, it's equally important to the Maris Club. Yeah. So yeah. they're proud to play for it. They're proud, yeah. proud to have it in the trophy cabinet. So it won't be easy. Um, yeah. Good, good chat, Matt. Yeah. Tavita, you're still actively, as you pointed out, playing at Stoke yeah. um, and uh, doing a, a player coach role. So, how many games for Stoke is it for you now? I think I'm. I just played my 95th game in the oh, weekend, wow. so right. five more games until my hundredth. Um, and just going off um, the Basley Cup, that's that's probably one of the main reasons why I keep coming back is to try and win that cup. So I'm going to have to come. And, Come back again next year. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing your blazer. <laughs> yeah. But Baz was an awesome man. Yeah. And, um, like uh, Maddie said, that, you know, no one's really coached from under six JB right through to senior level and then done it again. So he's gone up, coached again, and, and did a big full circle. So he's, he's an awesome man and has done so much for the club. So um, hence why. I really want to win that that trophy, so I might be might be a hundred years years older. <laughs> but yeah, for, uh, ninety five games, mate. Uh, yeah, Chris, yeah. Uh, so five. So, uh, I've actually tallied it up, and I looked uh, into the future, and um, it will be the not my hundredth game will be probably if everything goes right and I'm injury free, it will be out here uh, on the meadow uh, against Marist. Okay, yeah. that's that. There you go. Uh, we also know you as a well-known Tasman Marco Flanker, Marco 86, 42 games. So can you tell us about what you cherish the most during that time? Yeah, I think that's uh I think there's a bit of a typo there. I think it was 43 games. I came back for a little stint and uh played one sort of come off the bench. I think I'll count that as 43. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but, um yeah, I, I cherish a lot. There's a lot to cherish, like from um you know, your, your connections, your the players you meet, your friendships that you you make, the coaches, you know, that that era was KK and Leon McDonald. So I um, learnt a lot from from those coaches. Um and I guess the adversity that we had as a region is is as a Tasman Marco Union. Like there was a bit of um, you know, uncertainty there when where we you know, we weren't gonna be a province, you know. Um mm -hmm. Because of I don't know financial reasons and things like that. So as a young fella coming up, um, you know I, I was I'm in an iron with to to go to another region to to try and crack it. So I'm really thankful that you know things worked out and yeah. and I was part of that adversity and and seeing where we were um, from the start to to where we are now, um, having to be a part of that. It, it's a lot of the things that I the one thing that I cherish is has been part of that that culture and that that team that oh, you were, what yeah, has been yeah. it sort of glued here. not only potentially the players together but glued everyone together didn't they yeah. because uh, you know it was all yeah. about uh, trying to stay in the competition and stay alive yeah yeah but Tavita was part of that 2013 yeah, right. IBM yeah. Cup championship and then promotion to the premiership finals in yeah. 14 and 15 and yeah great so, great great time in Marco history it's an awesome time and you you remember that very vividly, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember one game, particularly with you, Tavita. Uh, it was against Waikato, I think, at Lansd at Trafalgar Park. Yeah. And you skinned their winger <laughs> on the right hand touchline. I've got that on my highlights. <laughs> <laughs> so he's running down the right hand touchline, and the winger's there, this little space between him and the touchline. He stepped him right and and, and yeah. scored. It's just the most amazing turn of speed you could hope to see yeah. from a flanker. Very good. The one of, yeah, probably one of my best tries ever. Um, but yeah, um, I think the winger was Semisi Masarewa. He's uh, I think he's playing for Japan now at the moment. So um, I always give him shit. <laughs> you know, always remind him of that. Uh, uh, you also played for the Chiefs in Super Rugby and three tests for Tonga um, and had playing stints in both London and Japan. So looking back, how much enjoyment, both personally and as a rugby player, do you get out of those experiences? Man, huge enjoyment, man. Yeah. You know, when you're, you're a young fella and you you set your goals to, you know, I put my my eggs in one basket back then because I know I don't come from a, a well-off family and 
you know, things like that. You dream about and you you sort of have no choice but to put your all your eggs in that basket and that's it's gotta work. So for me, having that mindset going uh starting off my rugby career, um, you know, hard work really pays off and being consistent and persistent and um not I guess waiting for if it's gonna happen. It's you know it's it's gonna happen, but it's it's the when, you know. When is it gonna happen? So um for me um yeah huge enjoyment mate um personally for me and, and my young family to to take them overseas to to london to japan and mm. experience different cultures and and the way they play rugby over there i you know i'm, I'm really blessed and, and and wouldn't change it for the world um yeah mm-hmm. fantastic career mate really seriously but to play for your country Play for the Super yep. Rugby franchise of your choice. Play for the Tasman Marco to play for Stoke. What fun. Um, Matt, your sister, Renee McDonald, is now the club capability manager at Stoke, taking over from Chris Little. Um, so uh, how important do you think that role is to your club uh, and the long-term viability of it? Yeah, uh, they definitely need to try and keep that viable because obviously it's a, oh, I reckon it's a huge importance to our club and, and all clubs that capable of, uh, capable of being that, that, that <laughs> role. That role, um, you know, gone are the days where, where you can get, um, you know, volunteers, you know, it's easier to come by these days. Um, to be doing such a big job, it takes a lot. Anyone who knows who, who's been involved in a club rugby is how much work actually goes on behind the scenes to get you know these 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 teams on the fields from from uh you know four five year olds all the way up to yeah. up, up to up to the 40s no no yeah, you know, definitely, definitely definitely important so it'd be good uh, if um yeah i suppose all clubs can keep that going um i know we'll definitely be pushing to, to try and keep it going um yeah yeah, it's, it's a multifaceted uh, role because, you know, basically the way I see it, it's kind of like a microcosm of being a, a, involved in that, that side of things, administration, marketing, mm-hmm. sponsorship side of things yeah. at the Tasman Rugby Union. You know, you're doing a lot of roles and, and the number of volunteers you can have now, there's not enough people to do those specific roles. So uh, having having Renee and, and uh, on board, uh, is fantastic for your club. We enjoy meeting with her. You know, we, all the CCMs get together and, and share ideas, and and uh, yeah, she's a great addition. Uh, following on the good work of Chris Little, um, and boys. Lastly, the game is under some duress, isn't it? At senior level, well, we three four years ago we were ten clubs. Mm. We're now seven um, playing in the Tasman Trophy. So, what do you put that down to? And uh, yeah, to beat I, I think it's, I guess it's it's just been in the region having, I guess, not the opportunity to do what you want to do here. I guess that's what pushes people out to to go find new opportunities elsewhere. Um, we don't have a big university here like the big cities like Christchurch, Dunedin, Auckland. So we we don't automatically automatically draw players here so um i feel that's one of the big big reasons um we're seeing a, a few more uh old stalwarts come back like you see ben coman and <laughs> and timmy coming back for women which is awesome for the game awesome for club rugby um and hopefully hopefully we we we, we uh, wake up a few more of those old boys but um yeah. uh as well as that just i guess see if, if you are an old boy at your club um, teaching them the, the way of the, the culture, your culture, and and um, what that looks like as a club uh, will go go um, a long way. A long well, way. Look, I agree with you because at Maris, you know, Tyler McKinn Stevenson's put his boots back on, and and <laughs> that's amazing, yeah. eh? He's and, looking good too, and he's looking, yeah, good. He's and looking he, good, and he's mentoring these young guys, and you know, they if they can see a fellow like that putting in the hard work and 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 really working hard off the, on and off the field, it's inspirational, isn't it? Mm. So I agree with you, Davido. I think getting uh, getting stalwarts back into your club is a, a very good thing. Yeah, Matt, um, do you reckon Premier Rugby 
Tasman Trophy rugby's around in three to four years. Where do you see it? Shucks. Yeah, well, my dad actually said a lot of years ago that it was going to die. Um, and that's lost a lot of factors, a lot of factors. Um, the, the universities, like Tavito was saying, you know, we lose a lot of players from the region due to that. They need to go off to uni. They can't hang around. Um, and boys have got to work, don't they? Yeah. Put, yeah. put meals but, up but, but what would be the alternative? Oh, just social rugby. Yeah. And then just, yeah, keep, keep, or well, just want to keep kids playing rugby as well. Like you see how many kids are dropping off from the ages of, you know, 14 to 18. Huge drop off. Mm. Like, because obviously we don't all develop at that same stage. You know, I was, I was 70 kgs on till I was still playing senior, first year senior rugby, you know, and that's not realistic. Like, you, like now, like, so, I mean, you just want to keep those kids in the game and give them their time to develop, develop in their own. And their own time and just keeping it fun. So when they do develop, they're still they're still engaged. Yeah. Being involved in um junior rugby, having young kids myself, that hasn't deterred me, you know, um, taking the kids out of rugby. But um you hear a lot of other parents talking about, you know, the the risks of, you know, the head knocks and all that sort of stuff. And that uh our, our under eights team last year Maybe half of them are coming back this year. A lot of them are trying other sports, basketball, um, and soccer, which are, you know, less less contact sports. Yeah, and there are a lot of options there, aren't there? Mountain biking yeah. included. So, yeah. But, so but, so but, what, if, so you, what, but if you're an average age of 17, 18, yeah. 19, I mean, you know, surely you so, can't uh, not have a premier division. I mean, we spoke to Corey last week. No, Gary Stevens. Sorry, Gary Stevens last week. And he said, we've got to work together to keep the clubs up because it's so difficult to get back. I mean, Wanderers, I don't know what the discussion has been there, but it was always a view them coming back. They haven't come back yet. So it's very difficult. It, it, even if the standard, like if you look at, say, football, they're very, very young in the first division. In fact, the second division, arguably, you know, it, some of the top second division teams could probably beat a first division team, but they keep the league alive and they bring those young 16, 17, 18 years through. So it might be a different style, but we've got to keep a first division, don't we? Oh, I, I would hope so. Uh, but you don't want to lose too many more clubs because it becomes yeah. a very restricted competition that you know you'd end up all playing each other three or four times and it's that's that's not as enjoyable. I like the current format. Home and away, that's that's great, um, and it's in the right length of time. You know, you're playing 14 games, so 16 games if you make the playoffs. So that to me is a, a good competition. But I still would like to see eight, eight to ten teams in the comp. But is that realistic in three or four years? I'm really not sure. Just while there are so many pressures, right, in terms of uh, time, work, cost of living. Injury, threat of injury, just so many issues. So I really kind of like something that Tavita tapped me into, which is get your stalwarts back. Let them let them mentor the kids out of college because you got boys out of college. We got yeah. boys out of college, and 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 just teach them how to be good. You know, do one rugby club. Mm. I think it's a great idea. You know, I remember when club rugby was humming here in Nelson. And that was I talk about I talked about opportunity of guys going out ways uh, to find that and um, what really worked well was Tasman Marco bringing mm -hmm. that opportunity so people were actually coming here to you know, try and crack the, the Tasman Marco so um, that has been a big issue too because you know obviously the boys are playing Super Rugby and they're all sort of mm -hmm. re-signed and there aren't really much positions in mm -hmm. In, in, in that top tier sort of thing. So that's another uh, barrier that, that oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll not get well, enough. Well, well it's, it, it, I guess here. it's almost a victim of success in a way because you've got eight All Blacks which come from this region or have played for the All Blacks. But, you know, we remember when we had maybe one or two or none and those players that come to the region are trying to get on the radar for Super Rugby. Now, you know, half the team, if not all the team, have got Super Rugby contracts. Yep. Yeah. Maybe we need another team. 
Are you wicked? Hey. 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 <laughs> Gary Stevens touched on it. Every club's got to just try and work harder in the off season to bring some players in from out of uh, the region. The obvious target area would be Auckland. And Baz talked about um, Marlborough, you know, the club, the club capability. A development officer, you know, and how some clubs don't have that role over there, and and that's something they need to have a look at to try and grow the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the alternative is not to have Marlborough, not to have a combined competition, but then what? You've got four, four <laughs> sides, got five, you know, five teams. Like, no, we need Marlborough. Oh, yeah. we definitely we need them strong. Yeah, absolutely, bring, bring back, yeah. bring, try and get them all back, get their clubs back. Yep, we, yeah. we've got a we've got a bus trip on Saturday, and it's part of rugby, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, going over the hill and having a crack over there and. Win or lose, coming back on the bus and getting home. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd we'll just be having a bus trip to Crowley. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah. Half yeah, an hour there, right. four hours back. Yeah. <laughs> right. A few uh, coffees on the way. Yeah, a few <laughs> coffees. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to win that cup, lads. Um, all right. Hey, look. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Great to see the colours on. Uh, we're in, now broadcasting from the heart of uh, Stoke, uh, country. Stoke Country. So um, uh, you know the. There's a few guests a bit tentative as they're walking in to this region, but uh, it's great to be here and um, it's great facilities. It's a great club. It's got a proud history and we really appreciate you guys coming in and give us giving us some insight into how the club's Thank doing. Thank you. Thank you, Les. All the best. Good, Good luck uh, on the bus trip. Yeah, it's a great weekend because one of my other passions, which is golf, the Masters start Ooh. this weekend. So. Well, a bit of golf in the morning and then a bus trip in the uh, in the afternoon. Looking forward to it. Your, your life is just idyllic, isn't it? You couldn't have planned it any better. Uh, that's it for another edition of the Marco Rugby Roundup. A big thank you to our venue sponsor, the Turf Hotel. Our special guests, Matt Leary and Tavita Koala Matangi from Stoke Rugby Club. And, of course, my co-host, Les Edwards. Don't forget, you can listen to this and other podcasts on mbstalknelson.co.nz and find MBS Talk Nelson on Spotify. Until next week, we will see you again on the Marco Rugby Roundup. The Marco Rugby Roundup. What's on, where, and when? It's the Talk of Nelson. MBS Talk Nelson.